So let's again revisit what are the in techniques in informed surgery strategies, how it is better than uninformed surgery strategies. Yeah, as we have seen that uninformed surgery strategies are like a blind search. They have no idea where to go to look for the goal. So they, but they have to visit in a systematic manner to all the nodes available because if we are not uh, visiting nodes in a systematic manner that there may be case of what uh, repeating a node again and again. So we have seen that there is a breadth first search that in BFS we have a different strategy to visit the nodes and in DFS we have an entirely different strategy that is we firstly go to the dev. In BFS we look at the uh, goal into the breadth first and there is also depth limited search and other we have seen so but they have no idea we have to look for the answer now to in artificial intelligence as we have seen that uh, many problems uh, zero in into the searching problems so we must drive some algorithms so that we can solve those questions very uh, less time in very less time so in informs of the studies as the name suggests it is uh, having some information beforehand they are having some information beforehand about the goal we have to look for that goal so if you are having some extra information with you so you are having an upper edge always as you see in real life also uh, suppose if you get the information that we are having a class test uh, in next week only one student got this information that we are having the class test in next week and other students are not aware that we are going to have a class test in next week somehow he get that information now if that person is having that information that uh, next week we are having a class test then he, he will or she will started preparing for the class test but other students are relaxed uh, they are uh, studying in their own pace as they used to do in normal days but that student that is having that prior information that about the class test is putting some extra effort and um, moving in the right direction to achieve the goal right so this is the difference between uninformed search and informed search so let's discuss what are the characteristics in informed search so in informed search, what happened? Informed search algorithm contains an array of knowledge. What we are talking about, we are having a beforehand information and we are saying that we are having an array of knowledge such as different type of information we can have beforehand. Just like I am giving you an example that one student is having the information that we are having the class test to in next week, right? Similarly, information like how far we are from the goal how to reach to goal node path cost whatever you think about a scenario like what is the cost between from lucknow to barabanki what is the cost between lucknow to gorakhpur right and think about what is the distance like from lucknow to barabanki and what is the distance between lucknow to gorakhpur and uh, Suppose if you are a traveler, you would like to visit some places of your interest. Then you firstly look for that oh, here is that famous temple that is in Gorakhpur or in Barabangi. There, there are there must be a famous temple in Barabangi also. But uh, which temple you would like to visit? It depends. Uh, if you are having that information, that particular temple will is have, is in Gorakhpur, but not in Baravanki, right? If you are having some information beforehand, so this is the thing is, in informed search, we are having an array of knowledge. Uh, that knowledge can be of any type, depends upon the requirement of the user. Now, what is the next thing? This knowledge help agents. Oh, uh, do you remember agents we are talking about? Uh, in the first unit, you have, we have discussed what are the agents and how they help you in solving the problem. Uh, so this area of knowledge help agents to explore less to the search space and find more efficiently the goal node. As I given you an example that uh, suppose you are, you want to go to the Sahara Ganj that is, is situated in 
Hazrat Ganj area, right? But if you are not aware, where is the Sahara Ganj Mall in Lucknow? You will look for each and every places of Lucknow area. Like suppose you are looking at Ali Ganj, Indranagar, Mahanagar. Where is that Sahara Ganj is situated? But if you are having that information before and you ask, suppose uh, you are from like. Uh, uh, you are from Madhya Pradesh or Bihar, you and you are having you are studying engineering in Lakhmi University. First time you come to your hostel, and uh, you wants to go some places for relaxation. So you find out that Saraganj is situated in Hazrat Gan with the help of those friends which are. Uh, living in Lucknow. So they're giving you information that Saraganj is in Hazrat Ganj area. Now you have to explore in very limited space. So you can go for like, where is Hazrat Ganj? I, I want to go to the Hazrat Ganj. And then when you reach to Hazrat Ganj, then you look for where is that Saraganj mall, right? So this prior knowledge help the agent to explore less to the search space and find more efficiently the goal node. This is very obvious thing that if you are having some before and information about your goal, then you can very efficiently search for the goal node. Now, the informed search algorithm is more useful for large search space. A very common thing that if you are having a very large search space and you would like to find a needle in that large search space and if you are not having that pure knowledge then it will be very difficult for you to find that needle okay so informed search algorithm uses the idea of heuristic informed search algorithm use the idea of heuristic so it is also called heuristic search now what is the meaning of heuristic can anyone tell me what do you understand by heuristic simply unmute yourself and can explain in 15 seconds or 10 seconds. Anyone? What do you understand by heuristic? What do you understand by heuristic? Come on. Any student can unmute yourself. Anyone? Come on, students. Don't tell me you have first time heard this word heuristic. Come on. Anyone out there? Self-learning approach. Yeah, it is kind of self-learning approach. Very good, Atul. Uh, can we have any other idea about heuristic? Yes. Anyone else? What do you understand by heuristic? Come on, do it first. Oh my God, everyone is sleeping? Is it so? 26 participants out there, excluding me, and only one answer from Atul. Come on, but if you are not able to speak in this uh, such a small gathering, how will you speak in front of everyone in group discussion? This is a part of your interviewing process, right? So at least we speak. See, if you give you correct answer, I will tell you that yeah you are right and if you are giving wrong answer i will correct you this is my job right so don't hesitate to speak at least tell something shrikant is saying hit and trial method yeah kinda this is hit and trial at least you are having some idea in your brain good shrikant come on please tell something i need at least five answers i am having two right now from atul and shrikant i need three more answers See, try to say something. You are having so much information in your brain. Process that information. Use your knowledge and apply here. Come on. So much time you have taken. Till this time you can Google it also. And I think you all are not interested. Is it so? Are you sleeping right now? Uh, Tushar is having some answer. A method where one tries various approaches to reach a specific goal. Yeah, your answer is uh, parallel to Shrikan. He is saying that hit and trial method. Similarly, Tushar is saying that a method where one tries various approaches to reach a specific goal. Two more answer, please. Two more answer, please. 
everyone are you looking for your other friends that they will answer come on oh my god such a dull response from my class come on two more answer please i will not move until unless i get two more answer okay amit kumar is having some answer amit kumar is saying themselves rather than telling them about things okay so you would like to say that they can uh, find out some ways to go to the goal right some approaches they will find out vishal kumar is saying imaginary search vishal how is it is an imaginary search can you explain your answer vishal can you explain what is an imaginary search vishal can you explain your answer to your class yes sir, uh, sir uh, yes sir uh, saying uh, imaginary search only because uh, heuristic basically means that anumani uh, anumani in hindi uh, that's why i was just saying maybe imaginary search okay. i'm not sure but i'm just saying so you can say probabilistic right not imaginary <laughs> yes sir yes sir exactly sir. okay so uh, we have another answer from varsha problem solving method that use shortcuts to produce solutions in a given deadline okay that's cool so we are having very good answers from the students see the thing is heuristic is something like everyone is saying that we have to apply uh, different type of methods to reach a goal if we say that in very layman language in hindi like we can say what jugad kind of thing right so what happened in that jugad that you are, may not get an optimal solution you will not get an optimal solution but yeah you can sort it out the problem means you can solve that problem in easy manner but this is not a guarantee that you will get a optimal solution so in heuristic you try several methods to reach to a goal but here what happen that you are having some information beforehand about that so let's have an definition of heuristic technique from the wikipedia i have find out that a heuristic technique or a heuristic is an any approach to problem solving or self discovery that employs is a practical method that is not guaranteed to be optimal perfect or rational okay either it is not a rational maybe thing that can solve a problem but is nevertheless sufficient for reaching an immediate short term goal or approximation means what is an heuristic technique that uh, it uh, try to solve the problem with the self discovery kind of thing it employs various practical methods to solve that problem but it not give you a guarantee to be an optimal perfect or a logical solution but nevertheless your work will be done right so whenever you ask your friends how you done this job i am not able to solve this question uh, from a long time then he say uh, i am using heuristic technique to solve this question right he has applied some kind of jugad on that thing and think differently and solve that question so this is not that similar to that thing but yeah heuristic technique is what this is and problem solving approach it, that is self discovery thing that gives you a sufficient solution for an immediate problem okay so let's see Heuri we have we use a heuristic function in heuristic search heuristic is a function which is used in informed search and it is finds the most promising path it takes the current state of the agent as its input and produces the estimation of how close agent is from the goal means uh, what we are talking about from starting that we have some information and array of knowledge through which we try to solve the problem so how this area of knowledge is there with it is uh, we use that area of knowledge with the help of a heuristic function now it, what heuristic function will do it takes the current state of the agent 
take it as an input and produce the estimation how how close agent is from the goal with the help of that area of knowledge now the heuristic method however might not always give the best solution but it guarantee to find a good solution in a reasonable time uh, as the varsha is saying that we are getting a solution of a problem in a given deadline similarly here it is written that we have to solve that question in a reasonable time it will not give you guarantee that it will give you optimal solution so the answer is asking a question that any practical example for heuristic function or implementation yes we will discuss in today's class only that how we can use this heuristic function and this is the topic of today's class only so let's see heuristic function estimates how close a state is to the goal so with the help of this heuristic function we try to find out the distance between the source and the goal now heuristic function is represented by h of n and it calculates the cost of an optimal path between the pair of states with the symbol h of n we represent the heuristic function the value of the heuristic function is always positive heuristic function is given as h of n is less than or equal to h asterisk n now what is h of n and what is h asterisk n here h of n is heuristic cost and h asterisk n is the estimated cost means h of n is your predicted cost that this may be the predicted cost from the source to the goal node and what is the actual cost this is the h asterisk n this is the estimated cost so what is the condition that your heuristic cost must be less than or equal to estimated cost this is the case with heuristic function that if this if you are following this equation then only you are in the domain of heuristic solution so what is an heuristic function so the anshu please uh, see very carefully that in heuristic function what we do this is a very simple thing we but we have to use <clears throat> some kind of uh, equation so that you can understand that how we are using things uh, think about a real scenario <clears throat> that uh, like any problem that there is an estimated cost excuse me <coughs> uh, there is an estimated cost suppose uh, from uh, lucknow to new delhi is uh, like uh, 1200 rupees from a luxury bus this is an estimated cost but what will happen that if you think that if we, i am taking the direct bus from lucknow to new delhi and uh, i uh, there is a estimated cost is 1200 now what we do suppose we will go from lucknow to firstly like bareilly and then we pick another bus and then go to new delhi uh, and then we will estimate the cost that what will be the fare from lucknow to bareilly and then what is the uh, fare from bareilly to new delhi and then we try to do the heuristic kind of thing that okay if this uh, fare is less than or equal to that direct <coughs> bus fare from lucknow to delhi then we will go and follow that particular path that we will go from firstly to bareilly and then we will pick another bus to go to new delhi or suppose if the fare is more than that estimated cost then we will not choose that heuristic path understand <clears throat> so this is a, a real world example for heuristic function that we firstly find out the what is the estimated cost this is the information you are having beforehand that this is the estimated cost then you will try to uh, make some uh, heuristic uh, approach like you are finding hit and trial just as the shrikant is saying that you are looking for different paths that from where we can get the this equation correct means your heuristic cost is less than or equal to estimated cost so this in this domain we have to give a answer in a deadline okay so let's see hence heuristic cost should be less than or equal to the estimated cost so this is the funda of heuristic uh, techniques that we have some estimated cost before and and then we look for the heuristic cost and that heuristic cost must be less than or equal to estimated cost in first we will discuss best first searched technique in 
informed search. So what is best for search? The idea is use an evaluation function f of n for each node. What is this f of n? This is your heuristic function. And this will provide an estimate for the total cost. Expand the node n with the smallest f of n. Suppose think about a tree, then we are applying that heuristic function on that and we expand those nodes wherever that uh, heuristic function value is less. Now how to implement this best for search? Order of the nodes in a fringe increasing order of cost. What is the meaning of fringe? Fringe means your outliers, means uh, your leaves kind of thing that you are picking from the tree means you, the nodes you are trying to visiting. So the visited nodes, you will put them in increasing order of cost, means you are going to apply some kind of priority kind of thing that if the cost is less, you will put first node in queue first and then in increasing order other nodes are there. So how to implement this best for search? Order the nodes in a fringe increasing order of cost and we are having two special cases of best first search. First one is Grady best first search that we will discuss today. And the next one is A optimal search. And this is called also A strict search. So let's see how this best first search is implemented in Grady best first. In best first search, what is the crux? What is the core idea? That we are going to use a heuristic function. And with the help of that heuristic function, we are looking for a smallest value of that heuristic function and put those nodes in an increasing order of cost and then apply your VFS or DFS, whatever you want to apply in that manner. So first one is Grady best first, best first search. Let's see how this work. Grady best first search algorithm always select the path which appear best at that moment. It is a combination of depth first search and breadth, breadth first search. So this Grady, as the name suggests you, Grady, uh, you have also discussed like Grady approaches, uh, Grady programming approaches in design and analysis of algorithm. Uh, can anyone tell me an example of uh, Grady programming? that you have studied in design and analysis of algorithms. Some one or two example, knapsack problem, very good. And any other example apart from knapsack? Any other example apart from knapsack? Yes. Anyone else apart from knapsack? I think two or three problems you have solved in Grady programming don't you only knapsack is it so okay you can find out what are the other approaches in grady programming so here in grady best for search what we are looking at we, we, at that particular moment what is the best path we will go for that the punker is saying single source shortest path okay you can see uh, network sharing grady okay path which appear best at that moment we will select that path only so let's see in breadth first search and depth first search uh, huffman okay huffman coding good so in breadth first search and depth first search when we are at a node we can consider any of the adjacent as next node. What happened in BFS and DFS? We'll go for adjacent nodes based upon your search strategy, either in breadth, either in depth. But both BFS and DFS blindly explore paths without considering any cost function. So the idea of best for search is to use an evaluation function to decide which adjacent is more promising and then explore. So what is this best for search in Grady way that you are going to use either BFS or DFS technique, but we are having some information beforehand with that. What we will do, we look for what is a promising node at that particular point of time. And then from that particular node, we will expand other nodes not in that particular manner that we have to go in that structured manner of BFS and DFS only. And how we can go for that promising node, which is a promising node, which is having a less value of your heuristic function. So we can apply a priority queue on that. So best for search allow us to take the advantage of both the algorithm with the help of BFS 
with the help of best for search at each step we can choose the most promising node and how you are getting that most promising node whose value is less in the best first search algorithm we expand the node which is closest to the goal node and the closest cost is estimated by heuristic function that is f of n is equal to g of n so what is f of n it is the estimated cost from node n to the goal we use a priority queue to store cost of nodes so the implementation is a variation of best first search we just need to change queue to priority queue as we have seen that in bfs we are using a queue so we just have to replace that queue with the priority queue and we can uh, put nodes in that manner so let's have an example and we can understand how this ready bus first search algorithm can work suppose we are having this problem we start from source s and search for goal i using given cost oh, excuse me Uh, sorry for the interrupt so what is the question we start from source s and we have to reach the goal i now you can see here we are having some heuristic uh, approach we have to apply on that with the help of prior information we are having as you can see here we are having values like 3 between s to a then 6 between s to b this you can think of any like fair value or a distance anything and uh, this is the cost you can think of also so we have to start from s and we have to reach to the goal i so with the help of best first search let's see how we can search these nodes and reach to the desired goal so you can see here s is here and we have to reach here i this is the goal so let's see the step how to move <clears throat> firstly we are we have to start from the source right so put that s into the priority queue initially contains s now let's have a priority queue this is a priority queue we are putting that source node there now remove s from the priority queue and process unvisited neighbors of s to priority queue so what are the neighbors of priority queue as you can see here a b and c are the neighbors now we have to look at the cost like 3 6 5 and put them in ascending order so in the next we have to design up that we remove that s and put neighbors of s in a priority manner so priority queue now contains a c b c is put before b because c has lesser cost as you can see here in priority queue now we are having a in front because it is having less cost and then 5 cost is c and then 6 cost is b so as you can see here if it is a case of bfs breadth first search you have to put them like a b c or you will put them like c b a but here the difference is with the help of that prior information that what is the distance or you can think of cost we put them in this manner that firstly we will visit a then we will visit c then we will visit b not in a b c or in c b a manner so this is the different thing we are having now you can see here we have crossed the s that is remove s from the priority queue so we have removed the s and then put these nodes a b c in a priority queue manner like a c b now let's move on so now we have to visit a because it is having less cost so remove a now from priority queue and process unvisited neighbors of a to priority queue now you can see here cross at a so we have we are visiting this node a then what will happen priority queue now contains what c b and then you can see the neighbors of a that is in the ascending order what then a 10 9 so this is the new priority queue you are having with the values c that is 5 b is having 6 and then e is 8 and d is 9 okay so let's move 
Now remove C from the priority queue and process unvisited neighbors of C to priority queue. As you can see, we have visited A. Now what is the next in, in the front was the C. So we have removed C now. So what is the neighbor of C? That is H. So priority queue now contains B, H, E, D. Now you, you are seeing that we are maintaining the ascending order very carefully. Now B, then B is having value 6, H is having value 7, E is having value 8, and D is 9. And how many nodes we have crossed till now? S is crossed, A is crossed, and C is crossed. So let's move. Oh, which next node is in the front of Q? That is B. Now the next turn is B. We will remove the B from this priority queue. Now remove node B from the priority queue and process unvisited neighbors of B to priority queue. Now we have crossed B also. Now what are the neighbors like F and G? Put them in priority queue. Now priority queue contain H, E, D, F, G. So now which one is the front in priority queue? This is H. Now we will go and remove this H from the path. Now remove H from the priority queue. Since our goal I is the neighbor of H, this is the goal. So we have reached the goal, so we will return. So in this manner, best first search algorithm works with the help of this prior information. So are we good with this approach? Yes or no? Very simple one. We simply have to put nodes in an ascending order. Are we good with this? Yes or no? Uh, Vinay is asking question, sir, what if all the edges have same weight? Will it behave as uninformed search? Okay, so if you are having some, like everything is same, then we are having no information to how to reach and where to move. Then if you are having other information, then we can move put that information into searching that particular node. If you are not having any information, then this is as good as we are having zero cost to every node, okay? So let's see what are the takeaways from this algorithm. What is the advantage? Uh, you can see we are having BFS and DFS both, so that this is more efficient than DFS and BFS, but we are having disadvantages also. It can get stuck in loop as well and the algorithm is not optimal so performance